What if I told you that you're living in a computer simulation? You might think that sounds crazy, but there are millions of people around the world who have experienced strange and frightening events supporting this idea. You see, if we live in a computer simulation like any other program, there will be bugs and glitches. Inconsistencies in the fabric of reality that momentarily show the simulation for what it is. Lines of code put there by an unknown power manipulating everything that we think is real. People are now on the lookout for these bugs, sharing them everywhere, especially online. These reports cover everything from memories being wiped to people vanishing without a trace. So pay attention to these stories. They may just help you see that you're living in a world much stranger than you could possibly imagine. Here are five people who discovered that we are living in a simulation. Something is wrong with my girlfriend. Lockdown during the pandemic has taken a toll on all of us. It's forced us to spend much more time indoors, bored, disconnected, and filled with apathy. But in the case of a man named Tony, spending all that time in his apartment brought him face to face with a real glitch in the matrix. Until lockdown, life was happy for Tony. He was working a good job as a PhD student at a computer science department of a prestigious university. He also lived in his apartment with his girlfriend named Jenna. Tony and Jenna had been together for years. By the time the pandemic hit and lockdown started, they both felt like they knew each other as well as two people can. They knew each other's personal histories, they knew each other's likes and dislikes, and they certainly knew everything about each other's jobs. As with many glitches in a simulation, the first moment Tony noticed that something was wrong, it was subtle. One morning, he walked into the kitchen of their apartment and saw Jenna making a cup of coffee. She had always been a big lover of coffee in the past and criticized Tony for putting sugar in his own cup. She always said that it ruined the taste. But there was Jenna standing at the kitchen table putting sugar in her morning cup of coffee. When Tony asked her about it, Jenna acted surprised. She told him, I've always put sugar in my coffee. At first, Tony tried to ignore this as a mistake on his part, but then other things started to become more apparent. Several of Jenna's routines changed, and even her likes and dislikes flipped. It almost began to feel to Tony as if she had been replaced or reprogrammed as an entirely new person. And that is when the biggest shock revealed itself. During the pandemic, Tony and Jenna worked from home. While Tony was sitting at his laptop, Jenna asked him, how's Larry doing? But Tony didn't know a Larry. When he told her this, Jenna got angry, saying, of course you know Larry, he works with you at the company. You're always talking about him. Tony tried to convince Jenna that Larry didn't exist, but she was adamant about it. What shocked Tony even more was that Jenna was certain that Tony knew Larry because they both worked for the same company. When Tony told Jenna that he worked as a university PhD student and had never worked at a company, she could not accept it. Something had gone very wrong for one of them. It was as if one of their lives had become reset and altered. But whose? Was Jenna really hallucinating the entire time or did she actually remember things how they were before the glitch? Was it Tony's life that had been transformed? Like a rewrite had occurred, an update to speak, where Tony's life suddenly had been altered for an unknown purpose. Or was Jenna the glitch herself? Neither of them could come to terms with this huge change in their lives, and to this day, they still can't. They were both left wondering if they could even trust each other. The most unsettling suspicion is that one of them may have been in on the change all along. After all, some people are going to be NPCs in the game, and others not. If we really are living in a simulation, just how many of our closest friends and family members are in on it? The question you have to ask yourself is could you be living in your own personal Truman Show? My husband thinks we both died. One type of glitch that often gets reported is the everyday world suddenly changing with no warning. Sometimes one subtle thing has altered. Sometimes it seems like the entire world has changed into something new and unfamiliar. But one case in particular is special because this strange shift in perception didn't happen to just one person, but two. Many years ago, Cheryl and Jason were happily dating, waiting to see where things would go between them. It was during this period that tragedy should have brought this relationship to a horrifying end. One night, Jason was driving his truck with a friend along for company when he hit a bad patch of black ice. 
There was no way he could have avoided it at the speed he was going, and so his truck slid into oncoming traffic. Cars swerved out of the way, but Jason remained helpless at the wheel as his truck slid across the ice. Two headlights beamed through his windshield as an oncoming car smashed straight into his truck. The vehicle rolled over and was completely mangled by the impact. When the paramedics arrived on the scene, they were amazed to see Jason and his friend standing by the side of the road. Both of them were unhurt. Looking at the wreckage, the paramedics couldn't believe that anyone could survive such a crash. This was backed up by the insurance company who later looked at the vehicle. How could two people walk out of a vehicle that was so crushed and twisted? The crash investigators could not see how it was possible. Jason and his friend absolutely should have died. A few days after the crash, Jason visited Cheryl at her apartment. They were talking casually when Jason started looking at the flat screen TV that Cheryl had in her room. Jason then asked nonchalantly, where's the other TV? Cheryl responded by telling him that it was the same television that they had since they started dating, but that Jason was convinced that instead of having a flat TV screen, that she had an old tube television. Time passed, and Jason maintained that there was something strange about the car crash and the fact that details like the television in Cheryl's room had somehow switched after it. Seven years passed, and by this time Cheryl and Jason were married. While on vacation to Italy, Cheryl suddenly became very ill while sightseeing. She had cramps and began bleeding. Panicked, she cried for help and Jason called for an ambulance. Cheryl was rushed to the hospital and the doctor said that she had an ectopic pregnancy. She was then taken to an emergency surgery where the pregnancy was tragically terminated and removed. When Cheryl regained consciousness, the doctor told her that had she waited any longer to phone an ambulance, she certainly would have died. It was almost a miracle that she survived that amount of bleeding. In fact, the doctor couldn't account for it all in his years of practicing. Two months on from that emergency, Cheryl was back home and recuperating with Jason. The conversation between the couple turned to fire risks in their home. Cheryl stated confidently that Jason didn't need to worry as they both had bought and installed a fire extinguisher in a cupboard of the house before their trip to Italy. But again, this puzzled Jason. Just like the changing television, Jason told Cheryl that there was no such fire extinguisher in their home. Cheryl laughed at this and even tried to remind him about how they had argued about where it should be installed, finally agreeing on the cupboard. To prove her point, she opened the cupboard, not only to find that there was no fire extinguisher, but that there was no evidence of it ever having been there. No fittings or holes where they had placed the screws. Cheryl thought it was a trick, but Jason then reminded her about the switching television and how it seemed to be the same phenomenon. After thinking about the situation for a while, Jason came to a startling conclusion. He recognized that the television had switched after his car crash, the same car crash he should have never walked away from. Then the disappearing fire extinguisher that Cheryl swore was real happened shortly after her brush with death. Again, a situation she was lucky to survive. A growing sense of dread fell across the couple as they looked around their lives and saw things were not as they should have been. Jason believed that they had both died in those instances and that their lives had been reset like a game so that they could continue in the simulation. For Jason and Cheryl, the afterlife itself isn't heaven, but just the same life lived over and over with no evidence of their deaths, but for a few glitches among the way to unnerve them. The coughing fit. In some films about simulations, such as The Matrix, it always reveals when a cat is seen twice that something has been changed or altered. As it turns out, there may be a very real glitch in our world involving an animal, though in this instance, it was a dog. It was an afternoon like any other. Ken's house was quiet. He was sitting on the couch watching television when he realized that his dog was choking on something. Rushing off to his couch, he managed to help the dog cough up a piece of food that had lodged itself in the animal's throat. After the panic subsided and he made sure the dog was okay, Ken continued to watch television, but now he was more conscious of what was happening with the dog. He watched as the animal walked past him and then sat down on its bed, which was on the other side of the couch just out of view. Ken listened as he heard the dog fall into a deep sleep. The animal was snoring, which wasn't unusual. What was unusual, however, was that the animal made a horrible sound. It was like the dog was dying. It let out a cough and a hacking, wheezing noise that Ken had never heard before. 
There was something strange about it, as if the animal was breathing its last. But although Ken felt uneasy, he leapt off the couch and rushed to the dog's bed to help. As soon as the dog's bed came into view, the sound ceased. Ken stood looking on in disbelief. He could see the animal's bed, but the dog was gone. He checked and saw the door to the room was closed. Even if the dog had gone through it, it would have had to pass Ken on the way. With his heart racing, he began to think that something truly terrible had happened to his dog. It was as though it had been erased from existence, and those horrible gasping breaths were a record of that last moment as the animal was deleted. Searching through the house, he could not find his pet. It wasn't hiding anywhere, and no matter how loudly he called out its name, he was only answered with silence. Just as Ken began to believe that his dog had glitched out of existence forever, he heard an animal barking outside. Rushing out, he found that his parents had the dog with them. When he asked them how long the animal had been with them, they said that they had been out for a walk with the dog for at least 30 minutes. Ken was so frightened by the experience that he stayed outside where the sun was out, trying to force away unsettling notions that he had truly witnessed a glitch in the Matrix. If his dog was outside as well, then what was the thing that had been walking around inside of his home? A duplicate or something truly unnameable? My sister knows things about people she's never met. A glitch in the Matrix doesn't have to be a thing changing or people acting differently than before. It can also happen when an individual is able to do things that shouldn't be possible. It's as if the glitch had bent the laws of physics around that person, giving them extraordinary powers. If we are in a simulation and glitches happen from time to time, could they produce the same effect in our real world? One of the most compelling accounts comes from someone named Sarah. Sarah has a little sister named Diana, who is able to do things others can't, and she's certain it's because of a bug in the system. The glitching phenomena around her started even before she was born. When Sarah's mother was pregnant with Diana, strange things started to happen around their home. Objects would disappear and reappear at a moment's notice, and the box with Sarah's mom's wedding dress still on it seemed to move from the attic to the bathroom floor without anyone seeing how that could have been possible. When the mother found the box and the wedding dress, she started immediately having contractions and bleeding. After being rushed to the hospital and several tests being run, the doctors told the mother that her unborn child, Diana, had a genetic disorder that might cause developmental delays and disabilities. Soon after, Diana was born. The family gave her all the love and care that they could to help her through the challenges that she faced. Thankfully, though Diana faced challenges, she was very high functioning. From an early age, she would talk looking up at the ceiling, and Diana's mother thought it looked as if she was talking to someone that no one else could see. When Diana was about four years old, she was taken to a Christmas party for children who had a similar condition. While waiting in line to see Santa Claus, Diana ran over to a stranger, grabbed the woman's leg, and started to cry. When the woman asked Diana what was wrong, Diana replied by saying, I'm so sorry that your mama left you. The woman then teared up and told Diana's mom that she lost her own mother to cancer just a few nights previous. Somehow, Diana had known. Incidents like this happened again and again. When Diana was 10 years old, she would talk to the corner of the room, but there was no one there. When she was asked who she was talking to, she would simply say her grandpa. Her grandfather had passed away five years previous. Diana then went on to tell her family that she would also talk with her real grandmother. This was Diana's biological grandmother rather than her step-grandmother, but she didn't even know that person existed and had passed on. When Diana described the woman she was talking to, the clothes she described were definitely those worn by her biological grandmother. She said the woman was wearing a yellow wig. This was correct as her grandmother had suffered from hair loss from an illness when she was younger. Finally, Diana then asked if she knew the grandmother's name. She replied with Jeannie. The family was shocked. Jeannie was the name of her real grandmother, and no one had ever spoken about her in front of the child as the grandmother had been estranged from the family for decades. Even into adulthood, Diana still exhibits her remarkable gift. When her sister Sarah got married, she received a phone call from Diana, crying hysterically on the phone and telling her to get out of her house. At that moment, Sarah's husband came home drunk and attacked her. Sarah left her husband that night, and she believes that it was her sister's tears that gave her the strength to do it. So, what do we make of all this? 
We've spoken about psychics before, and it certainly seems like Diana exhibits some of those strange skills. But what if they aren't supernatural in nature? The existence of this true story means that strange psychic powers may be given by whoever or whatever runs the program, feeding them information that they not would have otherwise been able to discover. But if this is true, how far down the rabbit hole does it go? Perhaps it's only a matter of time before someone out there has powers so vast that they could do anything. I died last night, but I'm still here. Many people researching these strange glitches believe that they occur when something in the program is being corrected in the code. It's similar to a coder finding a bug and then altering the behavior to the ways things are supposed to be. Unfortunately, sometimes in doing so, unforeseen consequences are created. In one case, a man named Gordon had one of the strangest experiences on record. It was late in the evening and he wasn't expecting anyone to phone him at that time. The phone rang and he answered it, seeing that the number belonged to his neighbor. The neighbor asked Gordon if he could help him move a mattress into the upstairs of his home. Gordon knew the neighbor's mom was ill and so he felt sorry for him and agreed to help, even at that late hour. When he arrived at the neighbor's house, he saw another man there. He was a friend of the neighbor's and happened to be a priest. The three men began moving the mattress upstairs, but then Gordon realized that they had more furniture to move from out front. Not wanting to abandon them to the work, he volunteered to help. Together, they began to move a large, heavy old wardrobe up the staircase. Gordon held the wardrobe at the bottom, while the neighbor and the priest pulled the wardrobe up the top of the stairs. Suddenly, the priest and the neighbor lost their grips, and the entire weight of the wardrobe fell down the stairs, smashing into Gordon and sending him flying out the door outside. He fell headfirst towards the concrete sidewalk when he then woke up in his own dining room. One minute he was heading for a nasty accident and the next he was back at home. Looking around he realized that his phone was ringing and that it was his wife. When he did he was shocked to hear the voice of the neighbor on the other end of the phone asking again for Gordon to help him move a mattress. Still confused and in a daze, Gordon agreed and headed over to his neighbors just as he did earlier. That was when he noticed the time. It seemed to have jumped 20 minutes back into the past. This was confirmed when he arrived at his neighbor's house, only to see the neighbor and the priest standing there waiting for him as they had done previously. Gordon knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that his accident on the stairs was real because he had never met the priest before, and yet he now knew him from previous experience. When the neighbor showed Gordon the mattress, Gordon said that he would help with it, but not the wardrobe, and the neighbor was puzzled. He hadn't unloaded the wardrobe from the trailer yet, so how could Gordon have known that there was one that needed to be lifted up the stairs? At this point, Gordon came clean about the entire story, telling them what had happened, and that he had lived this moment twice. They would have thought that he was crazy, but Gordon was able to describe much of the upstairs of the house, even though the neighbor knew he had never been there before. The priest was fascinated with the experience and asked Gordon what it was like to die. And that is when it came into sharp focus for him. He knew implicitly he had died that day when he fell headfirst into the concrete. But something had glitched. He had been sent back 20 minutes. With a story like this, what options do we have to explain it? Maybe Gordon was given a second chance at life by whoever runs this program where we all live. Or perhaps it was a true glitch. A freak accident where he was able to live the same moment twice and make a different choice the second time. The most unnerving conclusion is that the simulation is an experiment and that perhaps Gordon and all of us are doomed to repeat the same moments over and over until whoever runs the show seems fit to pull the plug. Maybe that's exactly what deja vu is. But hey, you don't need to believe any of this. It's all nonsense, right? Thank you so much for watching and remember to join my Discord and my Twitch, links are in the description at discord.gg slash Matthew Santoro and twitch.tv slash Matthew Santoro. Both communities are absolutely amazing and I would love for you guys to be a part of it. Take care and I'll see you over there.